Welcome to Art Show. I'm Craig Stover, and today I have with me Constance McBride. Hi, Constance. How are you today? I'm great. How are you, Craig? Great. Uh, fantastic day to talk to you. I'm very excited. I've got a bunch of images of yours I wanted to share so people can learn about your work, those who don't know you. So uh, I went on you know, your site and a few other places, and I picked pieces that I found most interesting. Um, tell me about this piece. Well, th this is a favorite of mine, actually, so I'm glad you put this up first. Uh, this is Lonely <laughs> Girl, room 40. I forget the number. <laughs> okay. I, I, I have these um, named uh, by room numbers, and it's basically room numbers for women in a assisted living facility. Great. That's a yeah, great so part I, of the I, story. This is a, a newer one that I made in 2021, I think. Okay. So is this an actual person that you know, or is it an invented? It's it's a yeah, it's invented. I would use that word. Um, when I'm making these, I started out with a portrait of my mother, but it really didn't look like my mother. It was just about her, and mm -hmm. and then it just became about all of these women in the in the assisted living facility uh, with her, and it's just grown from there. So they're just coming out at me, and mm -hmm. I I believe they're ancestors, frankly. They just flow out of you. You can't can't yeah, stop it. Yeah. You can't turn it off. Tell me about the, the wire structure behind these figures, because let me go to the next photo you have. So this is, you know, one of a series of these. Right. Uh, what's what is your thought process behind that? What is what are you trying to get across in this? Yeah, that, the wires is what I came to uh, after some experimentation on how to convey the confusion. It's basically you know, the confusion um, that uh, sets in with um, dementia, Alzheimer's disease, and that's what this is about. And um, you just, um, you know, it's a, it's a big jumble in there. And so, yeah. and you're losing control. Yeah, it makes sense now. Because I wasn't sure because I hadn't read about them. I wanted to keep it fresh, but Good. I, I love that understanding now. It, it changes it uh, quite a bit. So how many of these have you produced in this series? Uh, I think I'm up to 15 now. Okay. All right. Which is to me, doesn't seem like a lot. I feel yeah. like I need to, and that's why I'm, I'm continuing with the series. I take a break, you know, I took a long mm -hmm. break, frankly, uh, the first group early on, and then the pandemic set in the next mm -hmm. wave of this, but and, um, the materials I just are... feel like it's more in numbers because it's trying, you know, we're trying to raise awareness for right. this issue. So the the materials themselves, so that is wire that you're using, and then it's plaster. It's ceramic. It's clay. Ceramic. Okay. So they're fired. Yep. And is that glazes or is that paint on top? It's it's a variety of uh, materials, um, under glazes, oxide stains, okay. and 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 yes, there are a few that um, ended up with some acrylic on top too, and and some with pastel as well. So I, I want to move on, but I got to ask this question. Where do you get these bases? Oh, well, Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's yes. That's fantastic. Yes, I scoured Marketplace for, for the longest time, it felt like. And it took months. But every time I found one, uh, you know, it all connected. And I said, yeah. no more than $30. Yeah, That's and, great. and I ended up roaming all over the tri-state area getting these. Well, I hope I haven't ruined it. I hope people aren't going to flock to Facebook now to get, <laughs> get ones that you need. <laughs> so I came across this piece and this was this was a stunner to me. I really enjoyed this piece. And I see again, this is so this is earlier. Yes. Uh, but again, you're still dealing with thought processes of this human figure being that the head is, you know, what, what looks to be sliced open. Mm -hmm. Is am, am I on track with that? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's, um, I did this in 2016 and into 2017. And actually, you can see there's a figure behind it, um, which I ended up doing in 2017. So I was, I, I practiced yoga and mm -hmm. it, it seemed to be the, the only, and this is called Truth From Within. And uh, it's just where I could find the truth. And frankly, we're, I feel like we're still in this what we are in this state of uh, affairs that is so crazy um, that that's the only place I could get, um, you know, really uh, 
solitude and be by myself and try to figure out what the heck is going on out here. Yeah. Um, so for me, this what works for this is the, the materials, the pose, and also that sort of the stitching of the two pieces of the figure that you put there along along the edge. I, to me, I, I was I really responded to this one on an emotional level, which, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, you know, you drive around, say, like City Hall, and you see these sculptures of these, these, you know, generals and whatnot, and they have like no emotion whatsoever. It's just like a, you know, it's like a stop sign kind of a thing. But right. this really kind of grabs you. Uh, bravo. You really, it, oh, it really, thank you so much. It, I, it I mean, works. I see, I see lots of issues, but thank you for saying that. <laughs> well, artists are always self-critical of their right, own work. Right. I totally understand. So this is going back even further, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is called the Whisperers. Okay. This is a great piece. Do you still own this one? Well, I actually made quite a few of these. Okay. Um, I've been on this kick too for a while. Uh, I made the first grouping was three in the front and two in the back. And you might be showing that piece. These are the two in the back. Um, and this happened. It was 2015. It was my, my mother passed away in 2014 at the end of the year. It was, it was right before Thanksgiving. And I had to come back here. I was living in Arizona for a long time. And I was back here quite a bit in 2014. And and I was making different works. And when I came home to Arizona, I got back in the studio in January. And this is what happened. And mm -hmm. I got into the... So the three in the front and the two in the back, it was kind of, there were five figures. It was, um, you know, partly mourning the loss of my mother, but she's still whispering to me. And I'm in my fifth decade and all these past lives are whispering to me, my past self, you know, mm -hmm. you know, it, it just keeps on going and it just continues, even if they're not here physically on earth. Oh, this, this one really works. I'd, I'd love to see that. I know it's just life size, but I'd love to see it large. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be cool? I yeah, would love I know, that really too. gigantic. <laughs> yeah. Who has the space, right? I know, so. that's the problem. Yeah. So yeah. this one, and and I think this is the second to last one. Um, I just love the kind of patina-ish quality that you have on this. I know it's not a patina, but it's the color is just so delicious. Yeah, yeah, I really it's, like. It. Um, so, go ahead. That was it, that was it. It was just it's just it just works. I love the colors. Um, this is very early. These are kind of the first works I did, and. Um, in clay. Mm -hmm. I, I got into clay and in, not until 2006. So it was all new to me. And mm. the, the, the idea of being able to sculpt the figure, which I had been drawing before, but mm. now to make it 3d was just, it just blew my mind. This was my very first figurative piece. Very this first piece. Yeah. Okay. That's the one. Well, this is great. We've, we've shown we everything. Did it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well, that's great. That's, that's nice. So before you did ceramics and sculpture, were you always doing interested in sculpture or was, was there a time you did other mediums? No, I, I started out like everybody drawing and painting and okay. um, uh, the figure was always, always what I did always. So tell me a bit about your, your early work, but like, what was your what was your first exposure to art? Do you remember? Oh, I, I kind of remember it. Yeah, you know, I can't remember the the minute, but um, I remember being a kid and uh, I lived on a street, very busy street, Welsh Road up in the northeast. And literally across from me was the playground, uh, Pollock School and uh, the playground. And we had arts and crafts at the playground under the big A. It was this big pavilion kind of thing and we all sat under there I really do remember that as oh wow <laughs> <laughs> with great. all the colors and crayons and the bit you know so flash forward at what point did you decide that you wanted to be an artist did that happen early on or later I don't think I ever made a decision I just always was like I just always <laughs> felt like that's it what was I always am. there okay yeah like that's what I am that's what I do that's all I want to do that kind of thing I just never wanted to do anything else so the when you started to work, you you obviously, you know, you, painting and drawing was starting to work like that. And now you're 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 probably much more well known for the ceramic works that you've been doing. 
Oh yeah. So I'm curious, you know, how much of the early learnings of making art have have influenced you? Case in point, do you sketch out your ideas beforehand? Oh, good question. I used to. Okay. I used to when I was first figuring out clay and how to how to manipulate it and and, and how to work with it. Uh, but lately, um, especially with the series, once I'm in the series, then I'm just going. Okay. But if it's a new project, I'll do some sketches. I'll do, do you a keep little a sketchbook? bit. sketchbook? I have several, millions of sketchbooks. I have sketchbooks okay. everywhere. All right. You know, so if I get an idea, I will do something, but it's very loosey-goosey kind of sketch. Do you, does, uh, have you noticed, like, um, so how does your creative process work? Do do your ideas for a sculpture come first or do you find yourself now working with the materials and you develop an idea? I find it's usually one of the two. Yeah, it's, that's an, that's a hard question. Uh, <laughs> I would say both. I would say both okay. because, because I, I will come up with an idea. I, and I, and I'm, I'm on a, you know, on a roll with the themes I'm working with and mm -hmm. I'll probably always be on these themes uh it's all about aging for me and health issues and and just mm -hmm. and being a woman you know we're, mm -hmm. we're we're just suffering so um so i have that in my head all the time and then um then it's just about like what kind of poses will get across what i want to get across what how do i how do i make this work to make it um not perfectly clear to somebody but you know just to give the gist of what what i'm trying to say when you uh, when you work in series do you do you ever have a stopping and starting of the series or do you ever pick them up later on? They just always once you start, that's it, man. You're you're gone. I end up going back to it again. I I know I'm not the only one that does this. No. Right. But no. I never thought of myself as going to be that person. But but it just started happening and it just started happening. And so I'm just going with that flow. OK. Yeah, I just go with the flow. That's all I can say. <laughs> so when it comes to uh, working with clay and ceramics, who taught you those processes? How did, were you self-taught well, or is it no, I, somebody I took, light the fire? Somebody I, light I, the fire? <laughs> Sorry, I started out, I went to Abington Art Center to take a tile making class. Hmm. And I was just going to make tiles because I was dabbling in mosaics. I always love mosaics and I... I think I can make my own, you know, why don't I make some of my own stuff? And there was a class available and I signed up for it. And, and that just hit me like, oh, clay. I'm sure I played with it when I was a kid, but, you know, it didn't grab me then. And mm -hmm. it was 2001. And I took that class. Um, Carol Britton Stroud, I think her name was. Strode. Carol Britton Stroud. 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 Mm -hmm. And um, and then we moved to Arizona in 2000, I moved in 2002. Okay. <laughs> so I immediately found people in the clay community in Phoenix, Arizona, which is- Isn't there, is there a, quite a large community? Yes. Yeah, that's what I rem remember hearing. Yeah, hmm. it was fabulous. So I did have some uh, great people, David Bradley, who nobody knows here, but uh, David Bradley and uh, Kauri Fujitani are my two first two uh, clay instructors. So does your studio, do you fire your own works? You have your own- I do. Studio? Really? I do. Okay. Yep. Yeah, is the kiln's thing, in the garage. Is it going 24-7 or? Is... <laughs> no, you know why? Because it's bigger pieces. So it uh, right. takes longer to fill it up. And then, you right. turn. You know, it's, yeah, it's not production. <laughs> have you ever considered wood fire? Oh, I love wood firing process, but I have done it on occasion with smaller pieces in group okay. settings, you know. Right. That would make sense. Yeah. So I, this question, I wanted to ask you this because it sometimes trips up artists. I just like this question. Do you consider your works to be autobiographical or do you consider them sort of separate like only influenced by your life that's a really good question and very hard <laughs> <laughs> give it your best I... <laughs> so do you uh, do you, so what do you think i i i i you know it's funny i i prepared a little bit for this and i <laughs> was scroll it's kind of like oh like take a glance at all your work because i know he's going to pull up old ones <laughs> and i thought you know it, it i think it is i think it is autobiographical yeah. i do yeah. because how do you i mean that's where you're coming from i mean i'm going to talk about certain issues that we all experience yeah. but it's coming from 
from my experience as 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 a person living here. So, so, you, so you're in the midst. I, I mean, I can I can completely uh, uh, sympathize or agree with you about you know the the effects of a passing parent and how how that can you know you got to get that out. It has to you know in in the work kind of a thing. And so you've been working on this this series or that seems to have lit a, a, a fire under you uh, is there are you are you at a point yet where you think you, you know it's starting to dwindle like are you looking for a new idea yet or new do you look for new maybe mediums is that on the horizon yes yeah. yes yes so yes, how do you go yes. about did you just trip into fall into it and like oh okay <laughs> Are you going to take another tile class? <laughs> uh, what I'm going to do, I'm really thinking about it is um, I definitely want to work with m other materials. Once I started, you know, coming up with the wiring and I do add different uh, elements like n nature, natural elements to my work, especially uh -huh. when I do installation work. I really grab from nature, literally, uh -huh. and then uh, kind of slip coat, you know, with uh, clay slip. But um no, I want to get into more materials because I want to go bigger and I can't handle too heavy. Mm -hmm. The hard, you know, the older you get, the harder it is to mm -hmm. do all this. And then to have to pick it up, it's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, my next question was going to be talking about size because you do have a certain size that you're comfortable with. Yeah. And not all sculptures I find work that can be enlarged and, and scale. That one with the faces, the, the two faces with the three. I mean, that would be great, you know, as a gigantic piece. I guess my question is, because you obviously want to work larger, do you have the room? No. <laughs> no. No, I'm going to have to rent a much larger studio space for that. I know it. Yeah. But I I might be able to find, you know, I'll find somewhere that I can work yeah. some when do I get ready for it. Do you ever make maquettes? Yeah, I used to do that a lot, too. And I yeah. will make it today if it's a completely different, you know, shape. I'm working with if I'm working with a male figure I'm definitely going to do a maquette because I don't usually work with the male figure that often yeah huh. yeah yeah and it's good they're little sketches yeah so your studio is in your home yes for yeah. now for now okay <laughs> we all have the dream of the giant studio right right uh are, are you out of room already uh yeah I I would say yes yeah. <laughs> and I already rent a stu storage unit too so okay yeah that's <laughs> That's par for the course. Right. So when you go into your studio to work, do you have do you have uh, uh, a schedule for yourself? Do, do you just go in when you feel like it? Or is it like every every day, every other day? What's yeah, I like? have a schedule. I have to keep track of everything, especially mm -hmm. because of the timing of just the process, drying, coloring, firing. Drying again, coloring, firing again, maybe three times firing. It depends on what I'm doing, but I got to keep to that kind of schedule. And then if I have a deadline. Hmm? Do you keep a spreadsheet? Sounds like almost, it's a lot. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I could show you. They're all over the desk. <laughs> but so I here's do. I keep a calendar and, and really look down at Really? Yeah. I, I was a project a lot of manager in a former life. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's not just like paint a picture you're done you got many steps to no, do no that's the so, difference so speaking of many steps here's one of my favorite questions i ask is when you go into the studio do you find that you might have certain studio rituals that you often do yeah before yeah, before so. you start what what's give me give me a little taste what's it like well, well so here's the thing i i always have several things going at the same time because you have to, I think. I mean, in my case, I feel like I have to just to keep up with the schedule. And so I always go in and I want to find something that I can color first. And color meaning with stains or uh, underglazes, just okay. something simple uh -huh. to get going. And I Really? So it's, to... it's not even the piece that you're maybe going to be working on? No. But right. it's just, you just lay down a little color first. Right. That's fantastic. That's a <laughs> that's a great one. I love that one. You know, it it, it reminds me of uh, 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 I think it was uh, de Kooning said the first thing he does is he takes a canvas and he just makes a mark on it, so that way he can cover it up like it, it's not a, a a pure white canvas. Yeah, right? I understand. So that, that idea too. of like, you know, even just doing something, a simple thing to start to get get those creative juices flowing. Can, yep. 
can you work with other people in your space or do you need like everybody out? <laughs> I prefer everybody out. Yeah. I really prefer solitude, but I have done it many times. I teach ceramics. So I'm always in a studio with people and I'm always demoing. And then I'm, you know, months later, I'll try to finish that piece I demoed way back. Um, so I'm, I'm, I, I can do it, but yeah, my preference is solitude. <laughs> How long you been teaching? Uh, since 2015. Do you like it? Yes, I do. I love it, really. Yeah. I enjoy it a lot. I'm wondering do you, if you have the same thing that I do, which is, I know sometimes when I'm teaching, I can get just as much out of the students as they're getting out of me at the same time. And I I, I love, I, I need a charge. Definitely. Uh, the other day I found myself, I was working with uh, a, a young uh, kid came into my studio, a friend of mine has yeah. a as a young child and came in, we'd made a collage together. And after that, like I was at a log jam, he totally broke that through. So I was, that's great. I'm, I'm thrilled with those kind of things. I'm always curious to see how people make work and, and there's always similarities and these differences at the same time. So right. you know, there's no one way to approach what it is you make. I mean, you're making such a unique thing. Correct. And, and I mean, I have a student now who's just fantastic and she's never touched clay before. Yeah. And she's doing things that are just like they blow my mind. And I thought like, that took me five years to figure out. <laughs> right. You know, I, I don't say that out loud, but I think, oh, wow. <laughs> Have you ever, this is a strange question. Have you ever collaborated with anybody on something? I did collaborate on, a, on one project back in Phoenix. Um, I forget, it was a group show, and two of us got together and did something. And actually, same friends, we did a show. I was a, in a collective. And we had a project room that people could, um, you know, use. It's like the small third room mm -hmm. in the in the gallery space. And um, the same friend and I did a show together, and we collaborated on a whole series of faces. Yeah. Um, I I enjoy collaboration. Yeah. Yeah, it's not every artist can do it, so uh, it's it requires a certain kind of thing. I would I would love to see an exhibit of both your sculptural work. And the, you know, I guess your older work, your drawing and painting and whatnot. I mean, uh, do you cringe at thinking about that older work at all? Some uh, artists do. They, they're like, they don't even want to acknowledge it. But. Yeah, I, I, don't, I when I painted, with, I, I, never, I tried oil and I really couldn't get oil down. So I painted with acrylics and I was okay, but I really love pastel. So I, I most of my work is in pastel on paper and I just... That was probably my first medium pastel. Yeah. So I, I'm okay with some of it, but I, I want to get back to that too. I want to do both. You know, I want to do mm -hmm. kind of like I'm picturing this whole thing in a couple of years with, mm -hmm. and I would love to see, works on paper, you know, I would love to see the pastel. I'd love to see you do drawings of your sculptures. And yeah. See what that would look like, you know, it's a artists like you that I've met before. It's there's, there's not, like just one niche that you know there are some artists where they like oh i make this and then they make that the rest of their lives right, but right. I'm, i can tell right away from your work that you you're itchy for new things i guess that's Definitely. the easiest way to put that so um so i've got um uh one final question for you okay question i asked most artists if you've seen my show before um i love asking this question what does, what does making art do for you? Oh, yes. You know, when you said that, I thought, I know I've watched several of these and I can't remember what that question is. <laughs> um, I would just does everything for me. I, I can't imagine not having the ability to do it. I, if I didn't have the way to do this, I don't know what I would do. Yeah. So it means, kind of means everything. I, it's just who I am. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I go crazy. I couldn't right. do it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have to have the supplies at all times. That's for you sure. Make, you have to make the time. Yeah, yeah you do. Otherwise, you have you to go make a the little time. Nuts. So have, I, I'm sorry, I, I got one final question then. <laughs> have you ever g made work and then gone through a stretch where you haven't? Right you now. Ever, like like a right, like a writer's block kind of a thing? Yeah, right this minute. It's not like a block though. I, I'm, I'm in the process of moving again. Oh, okay. And I got to pack. And I can't sit and make. I got to pack. Right. Do you know so what happens when I you go right back? Hmm? When you go, when you finally get back to get into work, what happens? 
do you just get into that same groove or is it completely different? Oh, I'm going to get right back. I can't wait to sculpt, uh, you know, and I want to go back to another full figure. And this current situation hasn't allowed uh, me to do that. Just t space and, um, you know, access to water. I need more water access yeah. and I don't have it right now. So I got to I got to get to this next place and then I'll be able to do another figure. I can't wait. I, I look forward to seeing that and seeing an updated website. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming by and, and talking to me today. I've learned so much about your work. I'm a big fan because now I have to go back and look at your work again now that I know some of the secrets behind it. So uh, thank you very much for coming by today. And I want to thank everybody who watched today. I really appreciate it. Uh, we encourage you to please like and subscribe. It helps us uh, grow this channel. And we want to be able to keep doing these artist interviews because we feel it's a really great record. So again, thank you very much for coming by today. We look forward to thank you so much for having you me, again Craig. Soon. Thank you. Yep. Take care, it was everyone. Great.